Okay, in this video, we're going to go over chapter 10, which is uh, geometry. And the first section that we're going to be looking at is points, lines, planes, and angles. So we're going to do a lot of defining terms and stuff like that first. And then we can get into the fun stuff, which would be like triangles and some more geometry and perimeters and areas and stuff. But first, let's talk about a point. So a point, which kind of looks like this. All right is nothing more than a dot, like in some sort of space. All right, now, points do not have, there's no like length, no width, no dimensions whatsoever. All right, it's just a location. All right, now, when you have an infinite amount of points, between each other, you can form what we call a line. Make this look pretty, there we go. So a line, oops, sorry, 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 there we go. So a line connects two points by the shortest distance possible. Lines also extend indefinitely, which is kind of abbreviated here by the arrows on either side of this line, they just keep going on forever and ever and ever. All right. Now, the next thing we have is what we call a plane. And a plane kind of looks like this. Now, a plane is a flat surface. in space. Okay, now, planes, um, although it does not extend definitely, it does have some sort of a thickness. All right, so has thickness. All right. Now, one of the things that we're really used to seeing would be something like this. So when you think about the rectangular coordinate grid x comma y notice that we can form like all these different types of lines if we wanted to all right but when you talk about a plane in space and and that's a key word space that's a little bit different so that's going to look like this so notice here we have three axes instead of two or three axes instead of two the two that you and i are most familiar with are right here x and y so like what I drew over here on the left-hand side of your screen, I'm circling, okay? That is actually represented right here, which would be kind of like, if you look at your room and you look in the corner of room, that would be like the floor, okay? It would be like the floor. As soon as you add this third axis called the Z-axis, now you've introduced space, which means you can take any point, and I'm going to use red, for example, so in the XY plane, if that's point A and that's point A, as soon as you add that Z axis, you can now move this point up into space somewhere. All right. And that's how a plane exists. So a plane would exist somewhere in space where that point A is going to be located on that plane. All right. Now, just to kind of summarize, because I do want to go back to this, this idea of lines, all right? Here we have a line, and we denote that with this like little picture right here. So you have a line, extends indefinitely, and we can write it as AB with <clears throat> an arrow above it. Now, we have a half line. 
Now half lines look like this. Notice that. At A, we have an open dot. At B, we have a closed dot. So we call that a half line. That is different from a ray. Notice with the ray, both A and B have a closed dot. Okay. And finally, the last one is a line segment, which looks similar to a line, but it starts at A and it goes to B. And we can abbreviate that as just that symbol right there. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about are going to be angles. So we're going to learn like how do we form angles? What do they look like? How do we name them? So forth. So an angle is symbolized with that notation right there. And it's the union of two rays. So visually, Here's what we have right here, all right? Now, the bottom of this would be called the initial side. And then the top, we would call this the terminal side. Okay? And to name an angle, you need, you need basically three points. So, darken that in. So I'm gonna label the points A, B, C. And I would say that this would be angle A, B, C. Now, the key to naming naming the angle would be right here. All right, it's right in the middle. That is called the vertex. And the vertex of the angle should always be in the middle. So we can call this angle A, B, C or angle C, B, A, all right, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the vertex of the angle is directly in the middle. So the next thing is relationships with angles. All right, so we have many different angles that we speak about. The first one, it's gonna be something that looks like this. And we call this an acute angle. The second one looks like this. And this is called a right angle. Now, the reason why we call the first one acute and the second one is right, is a right angle forms a 90 degree angle but an acute angle, the angle measurement will be less than 90 degrees. All right, so it's smaller. It's a, acute angle is very small. Then we have this type of angle. Which we would call an obtuse angle. And obtuse angles the angle is bigger than 90 degrees. All right, and then the last type of angle we have is what we call a straight angle. And that's when the angle equals 180 degrees specifically. All right, now you may run into a situation where You have the measurement of one angle, but what you want to know is what's the measurement of the other angle? Well, if we take a step back and we look at the scenario that we have, hopefully you can see that overall we have a 90 degree angle. But then we have two angles that are inside of that. We have the angle in blue. 35 degrees, 
And then the other one, we don't know. We're going to call that, just call that angle X. Okay? Well, when you have this relationship here, where you have two angles that add up to equal 90 degrees, we call these two angles complementary angles. All right, so two angles that combine or add to give you 90 are called complementary. So we can easily solve this by subtracting 35 from both sides of the equation to give us 6 equals 65 degrees. Oh, 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 sorry, math is bad. 55 degrees, my bad. A little bit of a joke there. Hopefully you still like me after today. Now, we do have another relationship here, and that's in this example. So let's say we had this. And we know this angle right here, let's call it 25 degrees. Okay? What we want to know is, well, what's this angle? Well, when angle one plus angle two equals 180 degrees, these are called supplementary angles. All right, so if you look at what this example right here, overall we have a straight angle. We know one of them is 25. So all we have to do is just find the other one. So 25 degrees plus Angle two equals 180 degrees. Subtract 25 from both sides of the equation. Oops, and that gives us angle two equals 180 minus 25 or 155 degrees. All right. Now the last, or not the last, next to the last type of angle or relationship are going to be these things called vertical angles. Now vertical angles occur whenever you have the intersection of two lines. So we'll call this line one. We'll call this line two. If I label these angles, one, two, three, and four, what we're gonna find is that angle one is gonna equal angle three, all right? And we call these two angles congruent. Congruent meaning the same. So angle one, angle three are the same. And then angle two, and angle four are the same. And the last type of angle relationship we're gonna go over are called uh, transversal angles. Oops, let me get my black marker out. Now, your book does a really good job at going over this. So I'm gonna just kind of show you how we get everything, label down all the angles, and then from there, it's just a matter of you referring back to it when you're asked to find an angle. So we're first gonna start with two parallel lines. Then we cut them with what we call a transversal. All right, and I'm gonna label them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, <clears throat> when we go back and we look at this, there are angles that are going to be the same. Then there are going to be uh, angles that are not the same. What I want to focus on are all of these angles first. Angles three and six, and then angles four. Oops, looks terrible. 
and angles four and five. These are called alternate interior angles. And when you take two parallel lines and you cut them with a transversal, angle three will be the same exact measurement as angle six, and angle four will be the same exact measurement as angle five. Now, if we move on, we're going to have these things called exterior angles, okay? And, oh, I forgot the word alternate. And here are these angles right here. One and eight, and then two and seven. So... Angle one equals angle eight. Angle two equals angle seven. And finally, we have what we call corresponding angles. Now, corresponding angles would be Angle one equals angle five. Angle three equals angle four. I'm sorry, sorry, seven. Angle two equals angle six. And angle four equals angle eight. And those are all of the corresponding angles. And that's all the angles that we need to worry about. So, just know how to find them and what their names are because you're going to have a couple of homework problems where it's going to say, hey, angle three is 45 degrees. Find angle six. So since they are alternate interior angles, they're both going to be 45. All right. And that's going to be it for this video. I will see you in the next one.